Welcome back to The Grill. This is Mark Lamont Hill, and I am joined by Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. He's been talking to us tonight about everything from religion to pop culture. Doc, I got to ask you a little bit about politics as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We were just talking about the blogosphere and the role of social media. It seems to me that there's a whole universe out there that gets its politics from social media as well. And in that space, people like Candace Owens have become giants. In that space, we see a kind of black Republican movement. We see folk who don't believe the world is round. I mean, all this stuff operates. I mean, it seems like there's a whole other community of knowledge that didn't exist before. Is it dangerous? Oh man, it's dangerous. You brilliantly summed it up. It's extremely dangerous. Uh, and speaking of misinterpretation, I'll say Kobe and I'll say Jesus is Lord. So what's interesting is... <laughs> So, so what's interesting is that what I was hinting at when I said, like, the black Trumpism, I know that's kind of extreme and exaggerated, but it ain't really that exaggerated, because what's happening here is that we're giving up on traditional ways of knowing the world, which were themselves already shot through with all kinds of contradictions and problems. But the difference is if you're getting your news from social media, now, if social media is the delivery mechanism to download the Washington Post or the Nation or the Guardian or whatever progressive or conservative magazine you happen to be reading. That's one thing where they vetted these ideas, where journalists have been journalists and tried to look at trying to be as fair as possible. But you ain't got none of that kind of constraint going on uh, in the world of the blogosphere. For instance, a black woman was claiming that a white professor uh, at the University of Idaho, I think it was, was responsible for the death of those four students at the University of Idaho. And two days later, they arrested a young man who was a PhD student in criminology at the University yep. of Washington, not 10 miles from there. Now, now we don't know, maybe this blogger has some deep inside knowledge that this professor uh, was, was involved, but the professor has now sued her saying you can't just make stuff up in the- <laughs> You can't just there. tell people I killed four people, right? Like. But she's doubling but, down. Oh, I know it. You won't prevail against me. Uh, so my point is, yes, it's dangerous. And that is more, that kind of extremes. People go, oh, oh, we know about that. But no, it's the same thing. It's the same principle that regulates the distribution of knowledge and the assignment of the priority of what is higher or lower in the hierarchy. So when you're putting up higher stuff, I mean, it used to be it was bad. Oh, my God. They're getting their news from John Stewart. Now that looks like I wish they were, I wish John Stewart right. was there to give him Cronkite. He's like Walter Cronkite now compared to what we to what we're dealing with. Does, does that frustrate you as an intellectual oh my God. and as a professor? Because yes. suddenly you're in the same room with someone who doesn't read books. You're in the read. you can stop without saying right. Books. Who doesn't read exactly? And, and so the, and to the public. There's no difference. So, so on the one hand, you're put next to uh, someone who might have a PhD, say in finance, or just hypothetically, uh, yeah. who doesn't read about black folk, but, but calls himself a black scholar. You know, we'll call him Boyce, right? And then you got the person who just Google stuff, right? Then you got the person who just makes stuff up and who's just engaged in kind of demagoguery, right? Then you right. got the white person pretending to be black on the internet with a fake profile picture. And all these people are in the same room and y'all are having a debate about whether a vaccine works. You're having a debate mm -hmm. about, you know, the origins of civilization. You're having a debate about, God's sake, Willie Lynch, like it's 1992, right? And all this stuff is happening in a space and people can't tell the difference between you and them. It is astonishing. You've summed it up so powerfully. And it's frustrating and it, it is bewildering because you said we, we spent years studying, reading, going to the library where the lives are buried, figuring out how to think, looking at methodologies, taking classes about the difference between deconstruction and demythologization and the difference between Du Boisian, you know, double consciousness and Hooksian uh, notions of feminist pedagogy. God darn, what was the point? If the point is you can get in the room and just talk trash. I see people on, 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 on Twitter debating uh, lawyers and professionals. Oh, no, no, that ain't what's going to happen. Gonna see what happened to gonna. Bro, have you been to court? Do you know what it is? Now, that doesn't mean that we have a philosophical fallacy, a logical fallacy. The notion that because you have a PhD, therefore you can't be challenged. That ain't what we're saying. 
We're saying, let us get in the room and do what we do. Think, critically engage, uh, parse uh, competing evidences, look at those facts and see what emerges of, quote, the truth. That ain't what we're doing, though. What we're doing is, we're like you said, we're putting people in a room, they got ideas and opinions, and they feel equally compelled, and they don't feel a sense of deference and a f- sense of recognition or reverence for the kind of scholarship that you and I wield. It is astonishing, and not only that, it's bewildering, but it's devastating and dangerous to the process of American democracy, I would argue. Does it hurt your ego ever? ever the comments that you have to read, the, the debates you get in where suddenly... You know, people, again, who may not actually measure up. And I'm, I'm not talking about the degrees and the, the elitism kind of mm-hmm. approach. I'm talking about people who simply don't know enough to be in the conversation. And when, when people choose them over you or me or whoever, right? I mean, is there a way that that, does that t- do you ever take it personally? Oh, yeah, it, it hurts because I, I can't take it doggily. Because I'm a person, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, <laughs> I, I right. I take it canonically. Uh, <laughs> you know, the canine. No, no. Uh, yeah, it hurts because you have invested your lifeblood into trying to marshal facts against white supremacists who were doing what now black people are doing on the blogosphere. What black people are doing on the blogosphere is what white supremacists did 50 years ago. Make up stuff, don't read no books, project their own ideology, look at their frailty, fragility, and and fear, and project that onto you. Dog, the, the blogosphere, the social media, is a kind of algorithmic approximation of white supremacist bigotry 60 years ago. And so wow. when you think about it, God darn, it's it's a it's an unjust game. So yeah, it hurts because I'm trying to defend people. And then, you know, people come up to me and 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 doctor so-and-so, just call me Michael. That's good, you know, because God darn, you you got all these people with these self-anointed doctorates and stuff, and, and, and these hotep hooligans who are out here, you know, marshalling and manufacturing facts and acting like they're doing what they do. And I'm saying, like, bro, let me just sit my study. Uh, write my books and do what I got to do. And hopefully the cycle comes back around. It's a merry-go-round. So hopefully our turn comes again where facts, where study, where scholarship, where serious engagement are involved. And here's the irony. People like you and me and Cornell West and Bell Hooks before, you know, with him and Skip Gates to a certain degree, we were already getting dissed. Oh, y'all a bunch of public intellectuals. You ain't serious. We already facing it from within. Now I want to turn to some of those Negroes and go, how you like it now? Now you done created a whole generation of people who don't damn read, who disrespect the work we did because we made it look easy. Amen. Doc, I think we are going to come around because ultimately, I believe... Uh, that which is true, that which is rigorous, that which is thoughtful, that which is sincere, that which is loving will always ultimately prevail. And that's what you and your work embody. So thank you for your work. And more importantly, thank you uh, for being a long distance runner in our, str- in our struggle for freedom. Uh, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, thank you so much for joining us.